Hey guys, Lewis here with Shutterstock Tutorials and today we're going to have a look at a beginner friendly tutorial in whether you should be exposing for your highlights or for your shadows. In an ideal situation, in a perfect world, one would start their filmmaking journey with every available tool needed to craft the perfect film. However, and perhaps for the better because it allows for a greater learning experience, you're likely only going to be starting with your camera, a lens and a shotgun microphone. Now without the additional lighting equipment, there are going to be some circumstances that you find yourself in a high contrast scenario, particularly indoors. And as such, you're not going to be able to expose for the entire image correctly and instead you will have to expose for either the highlights or the shadows sacrificing the other, resulting in the shadows or the highlights becoming clipped. Now, as to how much you'll have to sacrifice for that one region is gonna be dependent on your camera's dynamic range. Now, I've already previously covered what dynamic range is in my grad ND tutorial, but for the sake of keeping all the information in this one video, let's just quickly cut to that animation. Dynamic range is the defined ratio between the darkest and lightest values that your camera can register. The greater the dynamic range, the further we can reach into both the shadows and the highlights to retain detail. With the advances in current camera technology, let's just say the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, which has 13 stops of dynamic range, shoots in RAW, a lot of information is recoverable, to an extent. But when you can seemingly recover some information from the shadows and some information from the highlights, which is the best to expose for? Well, for digital filmmaking, you want to look at something which is called exposing for the right, which means exposing for the highlights. And there are a few reasons why you should do this. Celluloid has a greater dynamic range due to how the film dyes and silver reacts to extreme exposures. You may have heard of the phrase highlight roll off. And this refers to the gradual rounding off of values of the highlights where they fade or progressively bloom into white. Instead of a sharp transition, film has a relaxed increase into the overexposed areas and likewise the shadows too can fall smoothly into darkness. I unfortunately have never had the luxury of filming with celluloid but from my 35mm film photographs you can still see where this happens. While this is a beginner tutorial, I will slightly dip into camera technology. Now, digital highlights are blown when a photo site, your sensor is made up of these millions in fact, reaches what is called the fill well capacity. And this is filled up linearly as opposed to that forgiving tail off at the highlight curve with celluloid. Meaning digital can quickly jump into having no digital at all once pushed past the threshold of your sensor. While the shadow end of the scale will still of course clip, it won't clip very easily because the response curve slopes more gradually. You'll have to seriously underexpose your footage to clip the blacks. In layman terms, if we expose for the highlights in a high contrast scenario, we can then bring up the shadows in post-production. Let's look at this example. One shot exposed to maintain details in the shadows and one shot exposed to limit the overexposure of the lamp and retain the details of the lampshade. In the shot where I've exposed to keep the slight details of his jacket, we can see the lamp in the back has become extremely hot. Now, it is important to note that with naturally bright elements, such as a lamp or a street lamp, they're gonna be bright. And if it's a naked bulb at full brightness or a translucent lampshade, they're likely gonna naturally clip. However, this is just too bright. It's distracting and plain ugly. I've exposed for the shadows and as a result, the lamp has just become a ball of hot white light. If I try and bring back down the highlights, we're getting no detail back really, a tiny bit of the lampshade. Alternatively, when I've exposed for the bright light, we can now see the detail within the lampshade, but of course our shadows are now crushed. There's no detail in his suit, his hair fades to pure black, and even though this is a nighttime scene in a location with just those practical light sources, it's too dark, and if we were to upload to YouTube, I'm sure this would start giving you a lot of compression banding. But, because we have that extra leeway with the shadow curve, we can raise these blacks back up and bring the details into the dark area of the image. Again, still making sure that the shadows are relatively obey the laws of a nighttime scene, but they're no longer crushed. So we've retained the detail of the bright highlights, brought the shadows back up into visibility, and created a nice scene with no tonal clipping something that just wasn't possible when trying to retain or recover i should say the details of those clipped highlights in the lamp of course depending on the severity of the underexposure and the performance of your camera it will introduce digital noise but the idea is that we can then negate that with a noise reduction plugin with that however 
While it is suggested for most circumstances when unavoidable, it's not great for every circumstance. Because if you spend so much time trying to protect your highlights, you're going to avoid correctly illuminating the primary focus of your shot. The subject. In this shot, the character was in a garage with no power and we had a bright light coming in through the window. While we had a bounce board to push off some shadows of his face, ultimately, if we exposed for the highlights so we could see outside into the exterior, it would have nullified all of the visible detail within the actor's face and made it appear unnatural. Likewise, in this circumstance, the blown up windows add to the atmosphere. So while it's suggested that you make sure you don't clip your highlights on details, such as a, a bright shirt on a standard dining room scene, there can be circumstances where you can let those highlights blow out. All right, guys, this is Lewis with Shutterstock Tutorials. Uh, hopefully, next time I'll catch you with a tutorial back out in the Welsh wilderness if the weather decides to stay dry for once. I'll catch you guys next time.